Now to the next knob, ratio. Ratio tells you how much compression will occur once you exceed the threshold. So I play, I play, I'm not really exceeding the threshold, and then I play real loud. How much turning down is going to happen? The ratio tells you. A compression ratio of one to one means that whatever exceeds the threshold will be reduced by nothing. Nothing will happen. So there will be no compression, hypothetically, if your ratio is one to one. This ratio doesn't go that low. It starts off at two to one, which is a light compression. 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1. You can see I'm playing the same intensity here on my bass guitar. And every, every time I change my ratio, I get a different amount of gain reduction. So I'm not changing the way that I'm playing. I'm just changing the ratio. Full ratio of infinity to 1 means that the maximum amount of compression will occur and the signal will not be allowed to pass the threshold as best as possible. 2 to 1 means there will be a very slight reduction of signals that rise above the threshold. So we'll keep it at 4 to 1 because my ears tell me to. Then we've got an output. What's the output for? Well, if you are going to turn down the loud parts to match the soft parts, you end up with a lot of soft parts. Your entire signal has been reduced. And that wasn't even the intention in the first place. Your intention was to make the signal more dynamically unified. And the compressor does this by turning down the loud parts. This output on a lot of compressors is called makeup gain. And it adds back the amplitude that was lost in the process of compression. So if your gain reduction meter is telling you I'm losing six decibels here, you can put that back at the output gain, and you will get a dynamically consistent signal that uses up the full meter instead of a dynamically consistent signal that is much reduced from what it used to be, all right? So the four things you can program in a compressor is, when will the compressor turn down? That's the threshold. How much will it turn down? That's the ratio. The two other things are how fast will it turn down and how fast will it return to normal? When you look at this meter, you should be pretending that that is your hand turning the signal down. And if it doesn't look natural to you, you need to go and change your attack and release settings. So always be pretending that the gain reduction meter is in fact your actual hand. So this gain reduction is happening very quickly. It's happening almost as soon as the sound from my bass guitar happens, I get the immediate action of gain reduction. That's because my attack is fast. So you can see with this button pressed in here, I will, I will have a fast action. Slower action means that it's going to take a second. How many seconds? Well, normally, you can use a knob to define your attack time. And you can go from a few milliseconds all the way up to about two seconds. This is fixed. That is what I really don't like about this compressor. You need to have a variable attack time. Because every sound is a snowflake, like we've just discussed. And, and the, this, this attack time couldn't possibly be right for all instruments all the time. Not possible. Now, we're going to change the release time. Watch what happens with a fast release. The compression starts and the compression ends relatively quickly. As soon as I take my finger off the bass guitar, the compression goes away relatively quickly. Let's use auto release. Can you see how the compression lasts a lot longer after I take my finger off the bass? It sort of lingers. That means that the attenuation is happening and then it is slowly returning back to normal. Once the signal falls below the threshold again, you get a slower action of returning to normal volume, which is called nominal level.